So today we're gonna to be talking about using the audio interface from a beginner's perspective inside of FL Studio. So I'm gonna cover the outside of the audio interface and talk through the inputs and the knobs that are on there, the different buttons that you use, and then we'll jump inside the program and talk about how you make sure that you have the audio settings correct inside of FL Studio's program. And then we'll also move on to problems and things that you might encounter along the way, things like getting a headphone mix right or making sure that you're not hearing a whole bunch of other things while you're recording. And with all that information, you should have everything that you need to know from a basic standpoint of being able to record and use an audio interface inside of FL Studio. So let's jump in. All right, so I'm gonna go over a couple of basic things about the audio interface. I'm gonna start with the front of the audio interface and just talk through the things that you're commonly gonna see and the way that you can use those to help give you a better product when you are recording vocals or recording an instrument or just trying to use an audio interface for your projects in general. So one of the most important things to understand is the actual gain knob that you're using on the channel that you're recording on. So the audio interface that I'm working with is this one. It's a AudioBox i2 by Presonus and it has two channels that are inputs on the front. It can either take an XLR cable or a quarter inch cable on either one of those inputs. And there's a gain knob that goes with each one of those channels. And what that means is it's a knob that basically turns up the volume for whatever you're putting into that channel. So if I plug in a mic on channel one, and if I crank that gain knob up, it's gonna give it more volume, so to speak. It's, it's called gain. And the more gain that it has, the louder it's gonna be when I actually record it in FL Studio. The second button that is usually a part of most of these audio interfaces that I'm gonna talk about is the 48 volt or the phantom power button. And this is what allows you to use things like condenser microphones that need to have a power source that helps them operate. So if you punch in that button, it'll turn whatever color, it'll light up some way on your audio interface. And that lets you know that it's giving power either to one channel or both channels. On my particular audio interface, when I punch in that 48 volt button, it gives 48 volt power to both channel one and channel two. So that might be something that you need to pay attention to if you have a piece of equipment that doesn't need 48 volts or it could damage the thing that you have plugged in or are going to plug in if you put 48 volts on it, just make sure that you pay attention to that so that you don't harm any of the equipment that you've gotten to make your songs. On my audio interface as well, there's another button that uh, has a little electric guitar shape by it and all that button is is to let you know that it has extra gain or extra volume that you can use if you're using an instrument like an electric guitar or a bass or something else that you plug into the audio interface where you need to get it some more volume. Because if you plug in an electric guitar and crank the volume all the way up, it still may not be enough uh, volume to record it at a, at a decent level so that it sounds okay when you do it inside of FL Studio. So some audio interfaces will come with that extra gain that you can add to an instrument that you plug in. So that's another thing that's available on some audio interfaces and not on others. And then the last thing that I wanna talk about is the mix knob. And so this has to do with when you are listening to things on the headphones. Some audio interfaces will have what's called a mix knob, which lets you either listen to what's coming from the audio interface, like what's going into the FL Studio, or you can turn it the other way and you can listen to what's coming out of the FL Studio. And this can be an issue for some people if they are trying to record something and they don't want to hear, let's say their voice, they don't want to hear their voice while they're recording it. If they have a turn to listen to what's coming out of the audio interface, it doesn't matter what they do otherwise in FL Studio, it's, they're still gonna hear their voice inside of the headphones. So if you're in a situation where you maybe don't want to hear your voice and you're trying to record yourself, make sure that you look at that mix knob on your audio interface and make sure that it's turned all the way to where it's only listening to what's coming out of FL Studio. And there are some things that you can do inside of FL Studio to set up a headphone mix to where you don't have to hear yourself when you're singing. And I have a video about that, which you can check out. And I'll also put a link for that in the description below. All right, so we've covered a lot of the basic things that are on the outside of the audio interface. So let's jump into FL Studio and I'll show you some things that you might wanna look at when you're setting up your audio interface to use with FL Studio. So if I open up F10 and I go to the audio tab, it's gonna show me this input and output menu. 
uh, right up front. And you'll have this drop down right up front that says device. And so what you want to look for is to make sure that you have the ASIO driver for your audio interface. And since my interface is the Personas Audio Box i2, I'm making sure that I'm choosing that Audio Box ASIO driver. When I do that, I also have another option for sample rate, and then I have an option for buffer length down here. And I can choose these manually inside of FL Studio, but I also need to make sure that I'm using the same settings inside of the actual audio interface. So I'm gonna bring up the settings here. So this is the control panel for my audio interface. Yours may look a little different depending on which brand you have of audio interface or what software you're using, whatever. So in mine, you can see that the sample rate is the same as it is in FL Studio. And then down here, it says block size, which is the same thing as the buffer size over here. So it's saying 512 or 11 milliseconds. And then it's also saying over here, 512, which is the block size. So if I do this drop down menu, you'll see that I have options all the way from 16 all the way up to 2048. And here's what you need to understand about these numbers. The lower the number that you go, the more closely it will sound to how it is in real life. So as soon as you speak, it will automatically pick that up and you'll hear it back in your headphones if you're listening. As you get further down this, it introduces a little bit of a delay. So if you do the 2048, you might hear a delay where you're actually hearing what you're saying after you said it. And that can be really distracting. But the reason that they have these different sizes is when you're recording, you wanna go as low as you can go with that number. But when you go lower with the number, it makes it harder on your computer. So that means your computer has to work harder to be able to make that audio get to your ears quicker so that it sounds okay. And what a lot of people will find is the further down that number that they go, they start getting some clicks or some pops or some crackling or some different things that are happening from their audio interface. And you wanna make sure that you're looking up here at this section right here where it shows you the CPU performance. So how is your computer handling all this stuff? So if you see this thing start to crank up really high to like 75 or towards 100, you know that you're pushing your computer really, really hard. And so you may need to go back into this uh, control panel for your audio interface and then set that block size or that buffer size a little bit higher. But there's also a point at which when you set that buffer size higher, you start hearing the delay. So it sounds separated from what you say and then what you hear. So it can throw some people off when they do that, but it's really helpful when you get into the mixing stage to actually increase your block size so that it's less intensive on your computer. And so you can process things in your mix and make it sound great without creating a lot of issues for your computer having to process things too quickly. And then something else to pay attention to inside here on this panel is what's called the playback tracking. And so when you record something with your audio interface and it shows up in the playlist, you may find out that it seems like the audio is coming in a little bit later than how you actually recorded it. And you can deal with that offset um, by doing using this. So you, it lets you change the offset to either forward by milliseconds or behind by milliseconds. So if you're hearing that your voice is coming in a little bit too ahead of things, you can set it back. If it's coming in too early, you can set this up higher and try to adjust it that way. But that is one thing that you can adjust a little bit in here if you're seeing that it's not quite matching up when you are recording things. All right, so now that we have the audio settings done inside of the audio settings menu when you brought up F10, we have all that picked out. We have the right driver. We have the right sample rate. We have the right buffer link that's gonna work for us. Now when we go over to the mixer, how you actually engage those tracks is to come into one of these empty insert mixer tracks. And then I'm gonna use this drop down from the left side to assign that track to the correct audio 
interface input. So if I'm gonna be recording on input one from my audio interface, when I come over here, I need to make sure that this is telling me that it's the audio box ASIO driver, and then I'm picking input one if I've got something plugged into input one. If I have something plugged into input two, like an instrument or something, then I need to make sure that I'm selecting input two on the channel that I'm trying to record. And what you'll see is that a red button shows up down here, which means that it's ready to actually record. So those are some of the settings that you just need to make sure that you have correct so that you can use your audio interface inside of FL Studio. So I wanna cover a few problems that I've heard a lot in the comments. I've seen a lot of comments about this. One of the things that I see a lot is that, hey, I set up to record my voice and I'm hearing the tracks, I'm hearing everything that's in there. So when I record, it's recording all the other stuff as well. So make sure that in your mixer track that you are setting up on an empty mixer track. So there's the master track, which everything flows into. Everything comes into that master track, but then there's all these individual insert tracks that you can set up on. So make sure that you're setting up to record on an empty mixer track. So for example, if I wanted to record a vocal here, I would make sure that this was empty so that there's not any other instruments that are playing in that section. And I would make sure that I choose the right input from my audio interface. And then I would check the volume on it to make sure that I'm getting the right gain. So let's say it was coming in too low. So you see that the, that is coming in really, really low down here. So what I wanna do is I wanna turn that up on the gain on my actual audio interface for that channel. So now it's coming in a little bit higher than what it was before. So that's better. Another thing that a lot of people talk about is they're setting up to record on this, um, on an audio interface and they don't wanna hear themselves while they're singing, like it makes them feel self-conscious. So the best way to eliminate that problem is to choose the channel that you're working on, make sure it's highlighted. So in this channel, I put microphone one in here on channel 13. I wanna disconnect that from the master track because what I'm hearing in my headphones is what's coming into the master track. And when you come into the program, automatically everything is routed to that master channel. So to get rid of things in your headphones, you need to take out the stuff that's in your master track. And then the other thing that you need to check is to make sure that the mix knob on your audio interface is turned to where you're only hearing what's coming from FL Studio and not listening to what's coming from your audio interface. Now I know there's some people that use a, a USB mic or something along those lines as their main microphone and it's kind of an audio interface and a microphone all in one. And I hear a lot of people say that they have a lot of problems with getting enough volume out of it or getting enough gain out of it. Um, so one thing that you can do is once you get done recording it, let's say that this was the file that we recorded. One thing that I can do is come down here to this pre-computed effects. So there's the wrench icon, and then there's this pre-computed effects when I click on this little knob over here. And then I can use this to boost uh, the clip. But you gotta be really careful with this because it gives it a lot of gain. And the one thing that you wanna pay attention to on this is if, if you have a, when you're recording your voice and it's coming in super, super low, when you boost that volume up after you've recorded, you may be bringing in a lot of noise with that recording as well, which is not what you want to have happen. So just make sure that you pay attention to that when you are messing with the gain on that so that you get the signal that you need, you get the recording that you need, but that you don't make it so noisy that it's hard to use it in your project or in your song. So hopefully that was a helpful overview of using an audio interface with FL Studio. If you want more help on beginner things dealing with FL Studio, I have a three part series on the basics of FL Studio. It will cover things like using the program, making sure that you understand the different windows that you're gonna be operating in, as well as using other equipment like an audio interface that we talked about today or a MIDI controller recording things like your voice or a guitar or a bass or other kinds of instruments or using MIDI to record things like drums or other VST instruments. So if you have an interest in that, there's a link in the description below. If you like this, go ahead and like it, subscribe if you aren't already, and I will see you in the next round.